Northern Ethiopia, a land of ancient civilizations, of the beginnings of Ethiopian Christianity, of the very first Muslims in this country. It's earth still offering up fragments of life from thousands of years ago. Welcome to Tigray. Welcome to Inside Africa. This dry, desolate landscape is the hallmark of the East African region known as Tigray. Rich with a history that spans three millennia. Legend holds that the Ark of the Covenant is kept here. And there's evidence that suggests the ancient civilization of Saba, also known as Sheba, has roots here as well. This land is an archaeologist's dream full of potential to uncover ancient sacred sites like this one near Wukro. Hela, how are you today? You're welcome, welcome. Th thank you so much for having us. What do we have here? Uh, uh, here we are in, uh, we have a temple. It's a ninth century temple. We are in the gate of the uh, ninth century uh, al Muqa temple. Harley tells me this temple was discovered in 2007 when the upper part of the altar was unearthed. Here we have in the center of the temple we have the altar, the elevation altar. This is the only complete existing altar in our globe, I can say. You can find older than this one, but part, not complete. This is the only complete altar in our world. On the side of the altar is an inscription in the Sabian language dedicating the altar to Almoka, the main god worshipped by the Saba people. The civilization is also known as the biblical Sheba people, who originated in the southern Arabia. During the excavation, archaeologists found remains of slaughtered bulls that were sacrificed here. If you could see, there are chisel marks here when they slaughtered the, uh, the bull, and then the blood was down, and then through the channel, and was collected here, and then they were used that for the necessary religious purpose. The spout is carved in the shape of a bull's head. Other artifacts, like this female statue, helped reveal that this temple was in use from the 9th century to the 3rd century BC. Once the archaeologists finish their excavation, Haile hopes this temple will be the first open museum in Ethiopia. We've now come a short distance from that al Maka temple to the edge of Wukru, the main town here. And in another sense, we've traveled more than a thousand years. Ethiopia was one of the first powers to adopt Christianity. The earliest churches date from the 4th century AD. And so they're not built, but hewn from the rock. There are more than 100 rock-hewn churches in the Tigray region and they were only discovered by the outside world in the last 200 years. This is Wukro Chakos, and from here you can clearly tell that it's been carved out of the rock. All three sides have been cut out from a rock and the insides hollowed. The swirling sandstone facade can be seen in the surrounding mountains. Nearby, a group of Christian children gather to sing songs, a preview of tomorrow's Sunday morning service. Just after dawn, we found the congregation of Vukro Chakos already gathered in their traditional white dress. 
Worshippers bow their heads in reverence to the same Christian message that has been preached to generations of Ethiopians at this holy site. Many kiss the rock that became the church physically and spiritually more than a thousand years ago. After the service, I have a chance to speak with monk Abba Jibra Michel Kumis, who's worked here for the last 17 years. He tells me that God gave Ethiopian Christians a divine vision of how to carve the churches out of the mountainside. This church was built as a result of the prayers of the holy king of Abreha Asfaha and his followers. They were teaching and praying. During that process, God answered their prayers and they were able to build this church from one rock. This rock has three entrances, three holy rooms, and 44 columns. Salam. How are you? Monk Jebra Michel takes me on a tour of the inside. He shows me water seeping into the church through the rock. This is considered holy water. In the 10th century, he tells me, there was a fire set by the Ethiopian queen Yodit Gudit in an attempt to abolish Christianity. Despite the destruction, the faded pictures and names of the saints that adorn the walls can still be seen. An enduring history preserved in the rock. Ahead on Inside Africa, we continue our tour of the holy sites in Tigray with a visit to the cradle of Ethiopian Islam. And what I'm told is the oldest standing building in sub-Saharan Africa.